Have you ever had to fly to or from a small rural or remote community? A regional jet is likely what you travelled on. It's nowhere near as exciting as larger planes, but the regional aircraft market is seeing plenty of change in recent years and continues to evolve. Let's look at both turboprops and regional jets and the choices airlines currently have in this market segment. Before moving into the different manufacturers and their aircraft, it is worth looking briefly at the differences between turboprop and jet aircraft. In general, jet engines allow aircraft to fly higher and faster. On longer journeys, this makes them more fuel efficient. However, on shorter flights, turboprops can be more desirable. The engines are lighter and more efficient at low altitudes, as well as during takeoff and landing. Turboprops can also operate with shorter runways and are also preferable on rough surfaces. They're also generally cheaper to maintain and operate. Turboprops have the ability to take off and land on concrete and shorter runways. So since they can land on surfaces such as grass and gravel, they, they are the most suitable aircraft for hard to reach airports. Also, common turboprops can easily take off and land at any runway under the length of 5,000 feet. They are also generally more efficient than jets for shorter distances. A main reason behind this is the higher power to weight ratio at takeoff and landing. Overall, they're much lighter. The choice comes down to an airline's operations and the airports they will serve. For shorter distance, low capacity regional flights, turboprops remain very popular. But for longer flights or to allow higher capacity, jets are preferable. There are two leading manufacturers of turboprop regional jets, ATR and de Havilland Canada. Their current range of turboprop aircraft were first introduced in the mid-1980s at a time when many airlines were looking to replace older propeller aircraft. Embraer has the EMB-120, which is still in service with some airlines, but has been out of production since 2001. Embraer may soon re-enter the market, though, with a 70-100 to seat turboprop. We'll have to wait and see what it comes up with. Franco-Italian company Aere da Trasporto Regionale, ATR, mainly offers two aircraft, the ATR-42 and ATR-72. Both have had several different variants over the years. The ATR-42-600 and ATR-72-600 are the currently produced models. Both types share cockpit commonality as well as parts and equipment, up to 90% according to ATR. The ATR-42 was the company's first aircraft. Entering service in 1985, it can accommodate up to 48 passengers. Subsequent variants improved on performance, with the latest Dash 600 offering a glass cockpit, improved propeller design, and increased maximum takeoff weight. The ATR-72 evolved as a stretched version of the ATR-42 and entered service in 1989. Its longer fuselage could fit up to 78 passengers. Range and capacity are obviously the main differences between the two models. The ATR-42 offers a maximum range of 1,302 km. This has increased to 1,404 km for the ATR-72. Moving on, the other big name in the turboprop market in recent years is the Dash 8. This aircraft, with its multiple manufacturers, has a long and varied history. But to make a long story short, the Dash 8 was introduced by de Havilland Canada, or DHC, in 1984, sold to Boeing in 1988 and then to Bombardier in 1992. Most recently, Bombardier sold it to Longview Aviation Capital in 2019. The aircraft's name was changed to the Q400 under Bombardier, but has now been returned to the DHC-8. The original Dash 8 entered service in 1984 and was a 39-seat aircraft and was soon followed by a more powerful Dash 200 variant. A Dash 300 was also offered, featuring a higher capacity of 56 passengers. Finally, the Dash 400 expanded capacity to 90 and added upgraded engines. Bombardier released this as the Q400 with quieter operation and reduced vibration. This 400 series is the only variant currently in production and has a range of up to 2,040 kilometers. The choice of ATR or Dash 8 and which is better really comes down to airline needs. There is certainly a place for both, as their split dominance of the market demonstrates. The Dash 8 offers higher capacity and a greater range. 
This may be desirable for some operators, but others may prefer the lower operating cost of the smaller ATR, especially as there are two different sized models available. There are other factors too. ATR aircraft are cheaper, while the Dash 8 is faster. The Dash 8 is also well known for its performance in harsh environments. Alaska Airlines Horizon Air and Ethiopian Airlines both like it for this reason. The dual production of the ATR-42 and ATR-72 has worked well for its manufacturer. The two models have a lot in common and share the same production line. This has kept the smaller variant in production despite much lower sales. As with turboprops, the regional jet market is mainly dominated by two aircraft types, Embraer's ERJ and E-Jets and Bombardier's CRJ series. There is a lot of change currently in the market, though. Bombardier recently sold the CRJ program to Mitsubishi in 2020, and its larger C-series to Airbus just before that. Despite coming close to a merger with Boeing, Embraer remains independent and is arguably the dominant jet manufacturer at the present time. New competition and new aircraft are on the horizon. Japan's Mitsubishi offers a long-anticipated and long-delayed competitor, while Russia and China also have their own regional jet competitors. While there are older aircraft still in service, such as the Fokker 70 and 100 and the BAE 146, let's look at the current manufacturers and their offerings, along with upcoming new entrants. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. Embraer introduced its first regional jet program, the Enterprise Regional Jet, or ERJ, at the Paris Air Show in 1989. The first ERJ-145 entered service in 1997 and fits up to 50 passengers with a range of 2,783 kilometers. It was followed later by additional variants. Production of the ERJ series ended in 2020, but aircraft remain in service with many airlines. In fact, Embraer has delivered 1,222 ERJ aircraft. As of January 2021, an impressive 758 of these remain in service. US regional airlines are among the largest operators and include United Express's Commute Air, American Airlines Envoy Air and Piedmont Airlines. Following the ERJ's success, Embraer moved on to produce larger regional jets through the E-Jet program. This has likewise been a great success, with over 1,400 aircraft built. The E-170 was the first produced, launched with LOT Polish Airlines in 2004. The first E-Jet series now includes the following variants. The improved E-2 program was launched in 2013, offering similar capacity jets with several improvements, including new wing design, more efficient engines and updated avionics. It's still early days for the E-2 series, but as of Q2 2020, Embraer had received 25 orders for the E-190 E-2 and 148 orders for the E-195 E-2. Brazilian airline Azul is the largest customer so far, having ordered 51 E195 E2s. Embraer's main competitor in the regional jet market has been Bombardier with its CRJ series. This was sold to Mitsubishi in June 2020, but remains well in service, with over 2,000 aircraft built and over 1,400 still in service as of January 2021. The first aircraft launched was the CRJ-100, introduced with Lufthansa in 1992. This was a 50-seat regional jet with a range of 3,056 kilometers. Bombardier improved on this with the same-sized CRJ-200, which had upgraded engines. The CRJ-700 series followed, entering service in 2001. It has a range of 2,553 kilometers. Meanwhile, the stretched CRJ-900 takes up to 90 passengers to a range of 2,876 kilometers. Finally, the largest CRJ-1000 offers a capacity of up to 104 with a range of 3,004 kilometers. The regional jet market has developed a lot over the past 30 years or so. 
Bombardier got a solid lead by launching its first aircraft in the early 1990s, and as a North American manufacturer, it was well-placed to build up relationships and orders with US airlines. Its aircraft were designed to meet the needs of these airlines. In fact, some aircraft capacities take into account airline and union requirements. Embraer was later to enter the market, but it was already well-established as both a turboprop and military plane maker. Even before Bombardier sold the CRJ program, Embraer's e-jets were arguably the more attractive option with more attention and updates, including developments such as extended range options. Now with the CRJ program sold, Embraer looks to lead the way. Each manufacturer's models, though, have competed strongly with one another. The ERJ-145 and the CRJ-200, for example, are closely matched with a capacity of 50. The ERJ-145 gets slightly ahead on range and fuel efficiency, but not a great deal. Other models can be compared similarly, and the choice often comes down to airline fleets and manufacturer relationships. Embraer's other major competition is Airbus. At the larger end of the E-Jet series, there is also overlap with the A220. This is where the regional and short-haul markets start to mix. At the top end, the A220-300 edges ahead of the E195-E2 in specification. It has a higher capacity, 160 against 146, and range, 5,920 km against 4,815. The A220 is more expensive to buy, but also cheaper to operate. For a true regional jet, Embraer is still the best option for many airlines. The A220 may beat the E195-E2 in some respects, but remember that this is the largest offering from Embraer. The commonality of smaller aircraft in the same range is a big advantage. Now let's briefly look at some of the newer and at present smaller competitors and consider what they have to offer. The Superjet 100 or SSJ 100 is a regional jet built by Russian state-owned manufacturer Sukhoi in service since 2011. The jet offers a passenger capacity of up to 108 in dense one-class configuration. It has a standard range of 3,048 kilometers and comes in a long-range version that boosts distance to 4,578 kilometers. By specification, the SSJ100 competes well against the Embraer E170 and E175E2, although Embraer beats it significantly for rage. As of January 2020, 302 SSJ100 aircraft had been ordered, with 175 delivered. The SSJ100 has struggled outside Russia so far. Almost all orders have been from Russian airlines or those in surrounding countries. European operator CityJet and Mexico's Interjet gave the SSJ100 a try, but both carriers have had issues with the plane. The final operational regional jet we'll discuss is the Chinese ARJ-21, built by Comac. This aircraft has a capacity of around 90 and first flew in 2008 and entered service in 2016 with Chengdu Airlines. There is only one variant so far, the ARJ-21-700, but a larger ARJ-21-900 is planned. It should have a capacity of around 105. The ARJ-21 competes against the E-190 and E-190E2. Embraer beats it both in range and capacity. Its 3,700km range is a letdown, but reflects its role on domestic Asian routes. This could be improved in later models for a more international appeal. Its one attractive element against Embraer is a lower list price – $38 million compared to $60 million. According to Comac, as of September 2020, 616 orders have been placed for the ARJ-21 from 23 customers. Most orders have been from Chinese airlines. Finally, Mitsubishi has had plans for a new regional jet for some time. But despite developing several test aircraft, its space jet program is unfortunately now paused. Back in 2007, the Japanese manufacturer revealed plans for its Mitsubishi Regional Jet or MRJ program with two different sized planes. There was even an initial order from ANA with target delivery in 2013. 
There have been plenty of delays since then, with a first flight eventually taking place in 2015. Certification delays after that pushed back entry to service again. In 2019, Mitsubishi announced a revamp of the program as the Space Jet with two variants. The M90 accommodates up to 88 passengers in one class, with a range of 3,770 kilometers. Meant to work with US airline scope clauses, the slightly smaller M100 has a two-class capacity of 76 and a range of 3,540 kilometers. The space jet would compete well against the E-175 with a similar capacity and range. As of early 2021, Mitsubishi has put the space jet program on hold and it's unclear when production or development will resume. Before this, there were 153 firm orders for aircraft, but delays had already caused the cancellation of some other orders. There have also been issues with orders from US airlines. In late 2019, it became apparent that the M90 would not meet union regulations for operation on regional routes. Trans State Airlines cancelled an order for 50 M90 aircraft and 50 further options following this. While regional jets don't get the same media attention or buzz as their larger counterparts, they fill an important part of the market. Ultimately, which aircraft is considered best highly depends on route and how an airline intends to use it. It does seem, however, that Embraer and ATR have done the best at withstanding the test of time and turbulent market forces. And what about you? Of the various aircraft we've covered, which one is your favorite? Or which one do you think is the best? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.